I'd like to show you something today that's going to change your life. Well, it will if you're a Highs developer exporting plugins on Mac. So what I've got for you is a script, and it's a script that you can use to export your plugin, and it will automatically code sign the plugin and the standalone, wrap them into an installer, and then code sign and notarize and staple the installer. So it'll kind of do almost everything for you. So this is just a demo project I've got in Hives. There's nothing in it. It's just um, it's just a keyboard. There's no samplers or anything. It's just for demonstration. So we can close Hives now. And this is the project folder on my desktop. I'll just open that up. And we can see it's a pretty standard Hives project folder. So the only thing I've added to this folder is this folder here called packaging. So if you're going to follow along with what I'm doing and you're going to use this script, the first step is to add a folder to your project called packaging. And inside here, I have one called OS X. When I export on Windows, I'll add a folder in here called Windows. And when I export on GNU Linux, I'll add a folder called GNU Linux. But for now, we just have the OS X folder. So again, this is something you need to add to your project. So packaging and OS X. And then you're going to need these three files. So the license is whatever license you're using as your end user license agreement. So this will be displayed to the user when they run the installer. So you need a license file of some kind. Then you're going to need a packages project. So this is for white box packages. And this is the template that actually builds the installer. And you need to modify this for your project. So you'll need to change the name of it and the names of the various sub packages. So you can see this is the demo AU. This one's the standalone. This is the VST3 and you need to change these identifiers as well. And every time you export a new version, you need to update these version numbers. So this is all standard stuff that you'd have to do anyway. Uh, one thing to note is if you're not exporting all three of these, then you need to remove the ones that you don't want. So let's say you're not exporting a VST3, then just remove that, just delete it from the template so it's not there. If you're going to add additional ones like VST2 and AAX, then you need to add them uh, to this template so that everything here matches what you're planning to export. One thing you should always check as well, if you go to project, go to requirements and resources, click on processor, click edit, and make sure this is set to any so that your installer will work on both Apple Silicon, which is M1, and Intel systems. And then the last thing you need is this build script. So this is the main script that we're going to be using. So I'm going to open that in a text editor so you can see it. Okay, so this is the build script. There are a few things you're going to need to set up in here the first time you set up this whole system. And then after that, there's a couple of sort of optional things you can set up each time you build. So let's start with the sort of permanent changes. So you need to set up the high source code location. So this is where you have your high source code. So in my case, it's in the shared folder and then highs. So this is my high source code folder. Then you need to set the project name. So mine's demo, so demo is what goes here. And then you need the path to the project folder. So that's the folder on my desktop here. So that's what path I've put in there. And then you need the name of the XML file. So that is in your project folder, XML preset backups. That's this file here, the file you want to export. So mine's called demo.xml. You don't need to include the XML part. You just put the name of the file. So it's just demo in my case. Then you need to put your Apple team ID and that will sort of be in two parts. You'll have the team name and then a number in parentheses. So it'll have this format. So it'll be a name of some kind, probably your name and then a number and letter combination in parentheses. And then you need your Apple ID. So this is the email address you use to log into your Apple developer account. And finally, you need an app specific password. Again, that's something you'll get through your developer account so if you don't know what that is, just uh, type into Google Apple developer app specific password, and you, you should find out how to make one of these fairly easily. Okay, so those are the sort of permanent things. Once you've done that, you, you only have to do it once per project. And generally for each project, the high source code folder is not going to change. So you probably won't even need to change that line for every project. It's just going to be these, um, these three that you really have to change. And then there's one other thing you may want to change. So if we scroll down in the script, I'm not going to explain how the whole thing works in detail because I don't want to overcomplicate this process. But one thing you might be interested in um, is this line here. So this script is using the highs command line interface. So you can interact with highs through a terminal. 
and run various commands. And this is one of the commands and it gives us a couple of options. And if you want to export an effects plugin rather than an instrument plugin, you need to change this line to the word effect. And I've got this set up to export both a VST and an AU. But if you want it to export VST2 and 3 and the AU, then you need to change this to VST2, 3, AU. There are some other combinations as well, but we won't go into those. And we'll just change that back to instrument. OK, so the last settings you need to look at are up here. So you need to set the version number. So this is um, the version of your project. So we can set that to version 1.0.1. .1. But whatever version you set needs to be the same as the one in the packages template. And I've forgotten what I set that to. I think I reset it back to 1.0.0. So we'll do that there. But yeah, just make sure this is the same as in the packages template. And this is the one thing you'll need to change every time you run a new build is just update the version number both here and in the packages template. OK, then we've got these options here. These are just yes, no options. So zero is no, one is yes. So do you want to build the standalone? I'm going to put a one there. Do you want to build a plugin? I'm going to put a one there. And remember, if you're not building one of these or you're adding additional things, then you'll need to update the packages template to accommodate for that. So for now, I'm just going to set it to build the standalone and build the plugin. I'm not going to build the installer. I'm not going to code sign anything and I'm not going to notarize. The only reason I'm doing that is so I can demonstrate these different steps to you guys. Usually I just set all of these to one and let it run through the whole thing. So I'm going to fill this in now with my proper details and then I'll get back to you and show you how we um, run this script. OK, so what we do is we open a terminal window and we drag our script onto that window and we hit enter. And it's going to start by building the standalone version first and then it will build the plugin version. So it's just running through this now and it gives us various status messages as it goes through. Um, telling us what it's doing. There's some warnings there. That's just from the compiler. We don't have to worry about that. And it's just going to run through the process. So I'll pick up again with you once this is completed because it's going to take a little while. OK, the build process is complete. And you can see our packaging folder has some new files in it. So the script will automatically copy the files here once the compilation is done. So this is the standalone. This is the AU which has a dot component extension, and this is the VST3. So you can see it's compiled all of these and copied the files to the packaging folder. So they're all in one place. You don't have to go and hunt them up and find out where they are and then bring them in here yourself. It will do it for you. So now we'll go back into our script and I'm going to change these. So we're not going to build the standalone and plugin anymore because we've already done that. We're going to build the installer and we're going to code sign everything and we're going to notarize it all. So I'll save that. But Usually you're probably just going to have all of these set to one, but by having these options here, it just lets you break things up a bit if you need to. OK, so now we'll run this script again. OK, so we're just going to open the terminal and we'll drag our script onto the terminal again. And it's going to build the installer and then it'll code sign it. And when it gets to the code signing stage, it's going to give us a little pop up and ask me to enter a password to unlock the keychain so that it can access my signing certificates. So that's kind of the only manual step you need to be here for. Everything else sort of runs automatically. So we'll start that going and we'll get some output again. So now it's code signing. It's building the installer from our template. And now it's asking for the password so it can access the keychain. And that's done. It's everything signed. And now it says it's notarizing, so that means it's uploading the installer to Apple servers. Now the installer should be visible in here, but sometimes Finder doesn't update. Yeah, I don't know why that is, but on my system, it doesn't even appear here, but there actually is the installer in this folder. Once it's all completed, it should magically appear here anyway. So it's being uploaded to Apple servers. Once it's uploaded, which can take a couple of minutes, um, it will then go into a holding loop and the script will check about once a minute to see if the notarization has been successful. And if it has been successful, it will staple the installer for us and everything's done. If it's not successful, you'll get an error message and then you can try and figure out what went wrong. The whole process usually takes maybe about 10 minutes. Sometimes it's faster. I've had occasions where it's taken a couple of hours, but if you find it's taking a really long time, search online for Apple's developer server status and see if there's any problem with their notary servers. Sometimes they go down briefly and um, the notarization will fail under those circumstances. Okay, so it says there was no errors uploading. 
Oh, and look, we can see our install has finally appeared here in uh, Finder. So it's been uploaded to Apple, so now we're just waiting for the notarization, and we'll get a status message in here about once a minute telling us how the notarization is going, and then when it's complete, it will uh, it'll tell us it's complete. And once it's complete, you'll also get an email from Apple telling you if it succeeded or if it failed. So you can go away and leave this and just check your emails every so often and then come back when the status email is sent through. So there's our first status message and we can see the notarization is in progress. Okay, and it's worked. You can see it says package approved, success, and the staple and validate action worked. So everything went through just fine. And I've used this script now oh, about 10, 15 times on a real project and it's worked every time perfectly well. So let's run this installer now. So there's the license that's coming from um, the license file we included. Okay, so it says the installation was a success. So if we go to our applications folder, we should have a demo application. There it is, let's run that. And there we go, there's our little demo project. So that's it, I hope you find this script useful. I'll leave a link in the video description to where you can get this build script and this uh, template for packages. I'd like to say thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters. You can see their names scrolling up the screen now. If you'd like to join me on Patreon, there's a link in the video description. I post additional content to Patreon usually every week, and patrons get early access to all of my videos. If you're one of my higher tier Patreon supporters, I'll be posting this entire demo project for you so that you can follow along with the exact steps I did in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.